Hi everyone, I'm Ina Wang from McGill University in Montreal, Canada. Today, I'm going to present our project called Age-Specific Perceptual Image Quality Assessment. This is a collaboration work between McGill and Iris Tech. First, I'll introduce the background of our research. Image quality assessment is a very subjective problem. Most existing IQ metrics focus on the characteristics of images and assume that every observer has the same vision. However, people's vision may be different, and most notably, people's vision will gradually get less clear as they age. In order to create a more accurate and personalized IQA metric, we could take advantage of the known age-dependent changes in the human visual system and incorporate the age of an observer into image quality assessment models. It's important to understand how vision degrades as people age. We could use contrast sensitivity to reflect the observer's visual status. Contrast sensitivity is a measure of the amount of contrast required to detect or discriminate an object. When we look at this grayscale image, some areas are visible to us while other areas are invisible. And the red curve that divides those areas is called the contrast sensitivity function. As people age, their contrast sensitivity changes. Here the figure on the right hand side shows the contrast sensitivity function of seven different age groups. We can see that the higher spatial frequency area is more affected by age compared to the lower spatial frequency area. Note that contrast sensitivity function measures the observer's ability to detect almost invisible contrast. However, the actual scene we see in real life mostly consists of higher contrast which is called supra-threshold contrast. There are different models for supra-threshold contrast matching. For example, the Kulikovsky model from the 70s observes a linearity in contrast perception. That is, two contrasts would appear the same to observers if the physical contrast minus the threshold contrast is the same, as shown in the left image. Some newer models think the Kulikovsky contrast matching model is not adequate enough and that aging mostly affects the near threshold contrast vision instead of supra threshold contrast vision, as shown in the right image. In our proposed IQA model, we will investigate both contrast matching models and we call them the Kulikovsky model and the supra threshold model, respectively. In our proposed model for age-specific image quality assessment, we first simulate how an image would be perceived by an observer of a certain age. Then we can apply a standard IQA metric after the age simulation box to evaluate the quality of the simulated image. Specifically, we choose the learned perceptual image patch similarity metric, LPIFS for short as our IQA metric after the age simulation box. LPIPS is a deep neural network based model that calculates the distance between the deep features of the two input images. And the output LPIPS distance correlates well with human perception. Thus, in our age specific IQA model, the input images to LPIPS are the original image and the corresponding age simulated image. We then calculate the LPIFS distance between these two images and use this distance as our IQA score. Note that the lower LPIFS distance corresponds to the higher perceptual image quality. This is because a lower LPIFS distance means that the age simulated image is more similar to the original input image. For the age simulation box, we apply the simulation algorithm by Wannett et al., which modifies the overall contrast visibility of a given image based on the observer's contrast sensitivity changes. Specifically, we first turn the input RGB image into a luminous image. Then, we decompose the input luminous image into a Laplacian pyramid. 
Each layer of the Laplacian pyramid represents a spatial frequency band. For simplicity, we use a certain spatial frequency value to represent each spatial frequency band. The pixel values in the Laplacian pyramid are normalized to the range of 0 to 1. Each pixel in the Laplacian pyramid represents the local contrast of the corresponding spatial frequency. Thus, by adjusting the pixel values in the Laplacian pyramid, we can change the contrast of the image. The difference between the adjusted pixel value and its original value in the Laplacian pyramid equals to the age-specific contrast detection threshold changes at the corresponding spatial frequency. Then we can reconstruct the output luminance image from the new Laplacian pyramid. Finally, we map the output luminance image back to the RGB image. The core of this algorithm is to adjust the pixel values in the Laplacian pyramid. Note that we can either increase or decrease the pixel values. If we decrease the pixel values, it will make the reconstructed image more blurry, which corresponds to the age simulation algorithm. If we increase the pixel values instead, it will make the reconstructed image sharper which means we can also generate compensation images for the age-related vision degradation. The age-specific contrast sensitivity changes can be calculated using this empirical equation. Here, delta CSF is the contrast sensitivity change. A is the age of the observer, and rho is the spatial frequency. Alpha and beta are empirical parameters. We use the contrast sensitivity function of a 24-year-old as the reference CSF, and then assume that vision starts to deteriorate from the age of 24 years old, according to this equation. Thus, we can generate the contrast sensitivity functions for people of age 24 and above. The contrast detection threshold is usually defined as 1 over the contrast sensitivity. So we can calculate the contrast detection threshold for every age value too. Then we can calculate the contrast detection threshold difference between the age we want to simulate and the reference age of 24. This contrast detection threshold difference reflects how much adjustment we want to make to the pixel values in the Laplacian pyramid. As discussed earlier, we would like to test both the Kulikovsky contrast matching model and the supra threshold contrast matching model. For the Kulikovsky model, since there is a linearity in contrast perception, we can simply apply adjustment to every pixel in the Laplacian pyramid, regardless of their original contrast. For the supra threshold model, aging usually affects the contrast perception near the detection threshold and has little effect on higher contrast perception. And we simplify this model by applying a mask to filter out the pixel positions where the original contrast is already high. We then only apply the contrast adjustment to the remaining areas of the image where the original contrast is low. Now let's look at some experimental results. Here we can see the age simulation images for three different age values, 24, 50, and 99 years old. And we simulated the images using both the Kulikovsky and the supra threshold model. We can see that the images get more and more blurry as the simulation age increases. We can also notice that the images are less blurry in the supra-threshold model compared to the Kulikovsky model. This is expected since the contrast reduction happens to much less pixel positions in the supra-threshold model. And here's the results of the age compensation algorithm for the same age values. Now, instead of getting blurry, 
The age compensation images get sharper as the age increases. And again, the supra threshold model has a more mild effect compared to the Kulikovsky model. Now let's see the results of our age specific IQA model, which is a combination of the age simulation and the LPIPS metric. We randomly select eight images as input and calculate the output of our model on the age range from 24 to 99. The result is as anticipated. The LPIPS distance increases when the age value increases, which means the perceived image quality decreases. Both the Kulikovsky model and the supra threshold model show the same trend, except the supra threshold model has less LPIPS distance values. The results look reasonable. The next step is to perform psychophysical experiments to validate our age-specific IQA model. We will use our model to predict the psychophysical experimental results. If our model prediction matches with the results from the psychophysical experiments, it means that our model is effective. This diagram shows our model prediction design for the psychophysical experiments. We simulate four observers at 24, 40, 65, and 99 years old, and use them to represent real observers from different age groups. We use the same test images as the ones we will use in our psychophysical experiment. For each test image, we generate four different compensation images for 24, 40, 65, and 99 years old. We then apply the age simulation algorithm on all four of the compensated images. In this way, for each reference image, we will get 16 quality scores under different conditions. Finally, we take the average across all reference images. In the psychophysical experiment, we used 21 reference images and generated four compensation images for each reference image. We asked the observers to compare the images in pairs and select the one they think that has higher image quality in each pairwise comparison. Then we calculate each observer's preference of the four compensation conditions by counting votes. We later divide our observers into three different age groups, namely the young, middle-aged, and older adults. And we average the answers of observers from the same age group. Now let's look at our age-specific IQA model prediction results for the psychophysical experiment. The figure on the left shows the results using the Kulikovsky contrast matching. We can see that for the four observers we simulated, all of them prefer the compensation age which is the closest to their real age. For instance, for a 24-year-old observer, the blue curve, the LPIPS distance is the lowest for the compensation age of 24, which means that this observer has the highest perceived image quality viewing the 24-year-old compensation image. And the other compensation images might appear overly compensated for them. The figure on the right shows the results using the supra threshold contrast matching. Here we can see that the 40, 65, and 99 year old observers almost have the same response. Here's the results for the psychophysical experiments conducted by real observers. We collected 59 participants for both experiments and calculated the average votes for each compensation age among each age group. The error bars show the standard deviations of each data point. When the observers are viewing compensated images generated using the Kulikovsky contrast matching model, the result is shown in the left image. When we look at the peak of the votes, we can see that the young adult's favorite compensation age is 24, while middle-aged and older adults' favorite compensation age is 40. 
The figure on the right shows the results of the observers viewing compensated images generated using the supra-threshold contrast matching model. Here, the older adult's favorite compensation age becomes 65. Now, let's do some statistical analysis. We calculate the Pearson's correlation coefficient between our model prediction and the actual human response from the psychophysical experiments. The Pearson's correlation coefficient is 0.761 for the Kulikowski model and 0.764 for the supra-threshold model. Both coefficients indicate high correlation between the model prediction and the human response. And the results of the supra-threshold model work slightly better. In the previous analysis, we group observers by their biological age. We could also cluster the observers according to their votes for each compensation condition. We calculate each observer's favorite compensation age and cluster them into four different groups because there are four different conditions. Then we calculate the average age of each cluster and the result is shown in the figures here. Uh, here we use the 10% trimmed average to get rid of some extreme cases. Since we didn't collect enough participants to represent the 99-year-old age range, we should discard the last data point and only consider the first three. For the first three data points, we can see that the trimmed average age in the supra-threshold model is more consistent with the observer's favorite compensation age compared to the Kulikowski model. In summary, we propose an age-specific IQA framework that combines an age simulation algorithm with an existing IQA metric. This helps us to assess the perceived image quality by observers from different age groups. In our model, we tested two different contrast matching theories. We also conducted psychophysical experiments among people from different age groups and showed that the predictions of our age-specific IQA metric align well with the actual human perception. Our work can be applied to develop personalized IQA and increase the accuracy of IQA metrics. This would also help Iris Tech Company to develop an industrial standard to evaluate the display image quality in automobiles.